So how did a black software engineer get a job at Twitch with no connections? If you guys don't know, getting a job with no connections can be extremely difficult. It can be like pulling teeth. It's hard. I've, I've seen other content creators talk about how in order to get their job, I'm gonna move that. In order to get their job at Twitch, they ended up doing an internship. They met some dude, they believed in him, they gave him three months to do, to see if they could do the job right. The guy didn't do the job right, they gave him three more months and he did well enough, they wanted him to stick around. And so that just goes to show you how many people can be a great software engineer if they hang around great software engineers. The industry is extremely elitist where if you don't have, if you don't come from fame, if you don't come from MIT, the big schools, it is very hard to break into these jobs. And they do that on purpose because being a software engineer, a good software engineer can bring you millions, can bring millions of dollars to your code base. And you might give him, let's say a hundred grand of that. A bad software engineer can lose you negative a million. <laughs> so there's reasons why people do not want you to be, do not want you to work for them. So how did I, what was my interviewing process to get into Twitch? I was interviewing, let's say it was during, it was right after COVID. I was working for a bank and I was looking for jobs. I was applying, I was getting jobs at Coin, well, I was getting interviews in places like Coinbase, like Stripe, um, like Robinhood, like all the big name companies and I was failing them. Um, like GitHub, all of them. I was having those interviews. I would always get to like the last round and then they would say, uh, I don't know if this guy is good enough. And the process, if you don't know what it's like to program or do interviewing, do interviews in for a programming job, Generally, the best way I can explain it to you is it's like taking a math test where you either get a zero or a hundred. And if you get a hundred, you get, you get a, what is it? You get a like hundreds of grand. So like you have all the pressure in the world. Sometimes like they used to before COVID, right? And we were wearing masks this time. They would fly you out and they would see you code in person and they would make a decision from that. So I get, I fail my, um, so I'm failing all these interviews. I'm getting to the end and I'm like, my feelings are hurt. I get Twitch. The first interview, I get asked a dynamic programming question. I answer it partially correct, right? I give a solution, but I did not give the best solution. And in my experience as a software engineer, if you don't give the best solution, they think that you're a trash coder. <laughs> they give you a zero. And so, yeah, like I thought to myself, I remember I was in tears, man. Like Twitch was a company that I would have loved to work for. And I just didn't think I was going to get the job and I had three more interviews. And so I told myself, I'm gonna put my best foot forward and I'm gonna keep trying. And so the other three interviews were very smooth, right? I got through my answer to the best question. I brought my best personality and they loved it. But in my experience, I've had interviews at Google where I have shown more genius. I made less mistakes and they didn't, didn't give me the job. They didn't give me the job. And I think that is to go, that goes to say, that goes to show you that it can be so subjective whether they give you the job. Like I could imagine guys like just being black 
it's so easy for me to sit here and say like, or wonder, did my interviewer think I was a little bit dumber because I was black, right? Because we all have those biases. We all think like, if I was interviewing somebody that was black and he talked like me, I would want to give him or her a little bit of a higher bump because I'm biased towards my own people. Of course, I want to put a disclaimer. I've been trained to not do that in my interviews. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I will admit, at least I want to. So I ended up getting the, they ended up calling me and telling me, hey, like, we gave the job to somebody else. But we're trying to see if we can allocate a little bit more money so that we can get you on too. And I ended up getting the job. And I was like, I was excited, right? Like Twitch is a big name. Like if you, at least the adults don't know, but if you are a millennial, like everybody knows Twitch. And it felt like I made it finally. Like my salary doubled. And so how did I get in there? How do you, if I were a student, and I didn't have a job and I was aspiring to be a software engineer right now, what would I do? Well, I would say I will be learning in-demand programming languages, like let's say Rust Lane. Rust right now, the White House has issued a, a, a declarant, like we need more Rust programmers. Rust, if you don't know what Rustling is right now, Rust is a memory safe language that is supposed to be the successor to C++. C++ is like programming. Their philosophy of C++ is give the program, let the programmer do what he wants. Believe in the talent of the programmer. But it comes with a cost. The programmer can write bugs in the code that is hard for them to see and could open up the system for attackers. They're called memory leaks. And these bugs are exploited in Windows in various different systems. Rust Lane. So C++ is a hard language to master. It's a hard language to master. And it requires you to really, really slow down and write the code in a very maintainable way. Rust Lane takes that concept and they're like, hey, if it compiles, then it's gonna be safe on all platforms. You don't have to worry about necessarily the C++ part of it. You don't have to, you don't necessarily have to worry about it breaking or it being exploited by other hackers. But it comes with a cost. Writing Rust Lane right now is a pain. I just hear people talk about how complex it is, how hard and how slow it is to write code in Rust Lane because it requires you to understand the language at a high level. And then at the same time, the compiler is very strict about what you are able to do and you must cross your I's and dot your T's. I will learn a language like wrestling right now. If I were looking for a job or I would be learning math at a high level and using Python in order to write machine learning algorithms, and I would do machine learning ops as well as that. So where do you go to learn some of this information? So I'm gonna share my screen. So right now, I took a course in order to learn, in order to get in Twitch. Twitch has two languages. Many of the things that are written at Twitch are written in Golang and Python. I learned Python when I was in school and then I learned Golang from Udemy. I took a Udemy course. You can come here. You can say, hey, like, I want to learn. Let's see what you got on Rust. 
And here's a Rust course. I don't think this is really good though. Let's see Rust programming language. Let's see if we get something like that. So you got the ultimate Rust crash course. It costs you $80, right? And the course is three hours long. So it's like, it gives you all you need to know to just get started. So I will be learning a in-demand language like Rust Lang right now. If I were a computer science student and I was looking for a job. So once I've learned Golang, what did I do next? Well, I looked at open source projects in order to work in. If you don't know what open source is, basically there's a lot of software on GitHub that people just have open to the community. Anybody can work on it. You can, and you get to work with the owners for free. You submit the code for free. You don't get any money for it, but you work with the owners of the software in order to um, program in a certain language. And so once I learned Golang, I went over into, into GitHub and let's just do it. Like you could say something like open source projects in Rust. Right, they'll have the best open source projects in Rust. They have Tari, you know, they might have something about chat and GPT. They have things like if you're interested in Bitcoin, like the world is your oyster. There's a lot of different stuff on here. Firecracker VM, there's a lot of different stuff on here as far as um, coding tools. Once you pick one, like let's say we were going to which one of these do I want to? I think Tokyo sounds probably like the the most firecracker VM, right? We get the firecracker. We're on GitHub and we check and we say, hey, we look at the issues. You see, they have different issues for people in order to get started on their project, right? You can read it, Rust Snapshot. And some of them, you see, some of them are marked with good first issue. You want to aim for things like these. Yes, sometimes these open source projects can get stupid complicated. And so even for good first issue, it might take you two weeks if you've never programmed. If you're not, if you're learning how to program and you need guidance, go for good first issue. So once you've learned, you, once you have a good first issue, they might have a community and you can ask questions about how to necessarily solve some of these issues. Once you do that, you answer it and then you put this on your resume and apply everywhere and you say, hey, I have Rust experience, here's my coding sample. And that's what I did in order to get a job at Twitch. If you look at my pull request, you can see here, I was working with an open source project named Wagtail. And so basically I went through the process of code reviews, coding. I was able to submit this link. This link was shown to my manager and they were like, wow, like this dude knows what he's doing. He's been through the process. He's seen it all. He's writing HTML, JS. Um, he's coding in Golang. Like this guy is high has a high level of proof that he can he can work here and so if i were a student right now and also use the ai tools like i do actually use ai in my job i would be learning different ai tools and working on on doing open source if you have a lot of free time this is going to be for the guys who have a lot of free time if you don't have a lot of free time, I would aim to be in military tech and go the route of the certifications. The certifications are going to bring you overseas and then you're going to have a lot of free time too. But if I were a, if I was in the job market today and I was trying to break in, I would learn Rust. I would learn machine learning, ML ops, which is deploying the models. And if you could like write the models, that'd be great too. I would be doing open source and then I would submit this around to a lot of different companies. Do I feel like there is hope in the industry right now? I don't know. Like people, 
I'm going to be honest and say people are, people think that in the next five years that we are going to, the AI is going to become just as smart as humans and it's going to be a revolution. I can't say, if you ask me, I don't know if it's going to happen in five years. I don't know if it's going to happen in 10 years, but I do know one thing, like, I believe that probably in my lifetime, I will not be able to get a coding job in, in my lifetime. So it's always good to defer, use the AI tools if they come along. But who knows, at the same time, even if you ask chat GPT right now, when are you gonna take our jobs? It'll say, I don't know, it's up for debate, right? It's gonna say something like, do we there's debate whether general intelligence is even possible so i would be programming i would be learning about these ai tools and if i were students today who knows i might even use these tools to even try to see if i can start my own business but i will say focus your energy on one thing whether it's getting a job and getting a job at a fan company might not be it at this current moment, but if you know Rust, you can get a job at a lot of different startups. But that concludes my 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 spiel on on how to get a job today if I were a student. Thank you so much for watching the video to the entirety. Every single time you like, subscribe, and comment, this really pushes the channel forward and helps us get to our goals. I really wanna just say thank you. And if you are hating, it's all good. The hating helps too. Peace.